When you're decorating your home on a budget, the most important thing is to make sure that you get home decor pieces that are versatile. Things that you're going to be able to move from room to room so that you can refresh and update your home from season to season or from year to year. You want things that are going to stay with you for the long haul. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the 12 home decor items that I think everyone should have. And especially if you're decorating on a budget, start with these 12 first and you'll be well on your way to decorating a beautiful space. Hi, I'm Lindsay Diane from dianedecor.com. This video is all about how to decorate your home on a budget with 12 key items that are going to give you versatility and longevity in your home. Let's get started with number one. First up is a set of canisters. Now you can get these just about anywhere. I have a set of three that look like this. They're kind of this honeycomb canister. Right now I'm using them for coffee, uh, powdered creamer and sugar in my kitchen but I have also used these in the past in the bathroom, especially the smaller two. This is the medium sized one here. We have the larger big guy here. You can use the smaller ones in your bathroom to fill with cotton balls, to fill with um, cotton swabs, anything like that, whether you wanna put disposable razors in it and have a nice fancy vessel, you can use it with the top or not. Again, like I said, I have powdered creamer in mine right now, but you know, if you don't want it to look so much like a canister, just pull the top off of it and you just kind of have a nice little jar, fancy vessel to work with. These are great. You can move them all around the house. I would recommend getting a neutral color, a, clear, a cream, a white, or just get a clear glass set. What I would do is if you're going to go for a neutral color like the white, look for something with a little bit of a texture or pattern to it instead of that plain shellac kind of glaze that a lot of the cheaper looking canisters uh, come in. These are just really, really nice. They're sturdy, of course, and they're pretty heavy. The next thing that you'll want to get for a home decor item when you're first starting out or if you are really trying to fill in um, little pockets in your rooms or on your countertops is a tray. Now this has to be probably my favorite one. This is very long. It is considered like a serving board, but it's footed and I absolutely love it. It gives it a really unique look and it also helps elevate items off of your surface. So this one I found at Target. It's from the Hearth and Hand with Magnolia line. Um, I have had a hard time finding dupes for this style. I find it to be very unique. I don't think that you can order it online anymore, but you can still pick it up in stores. It is available in uh, a bunch of stores near me. So I will link to the product page and you can see if it's available locally near you. It was only $30. I use this right now in my kitchen. I'll insert some shots of how I'm styling all of these items, but I use this in my kitchen along with the next item to just kind of decorate my counter. I don't have a ton of counter space, so I really like the fact that this was really long and narrow. It also works great for a sofa table or a console table or even up on a mantle if you wanted to do that. It's very, very versatile. You can, again, move it all around the house, style it different ways. I currently use it with some little mini potted plants, but I could just as easily use it with my canisters and at Christmas time, odds are I'll switch out the mini potted plants for some little mini Christmas trees or Christmas figurines that just can kind of lay slightly elevated in the background of my kitchen on the countertop. I really love that look. But again, you can use this tray a variety of places, especially because it is narrow and long and gives you that extra elevation. It's just perfect. So I would say look for something like this. Another type of tray that is great is just a rounded tray, but with sides. So I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. 
This guy I've had for a very long time. And if you follow me on DianeDecor.com, you'll see this pop up in a variety of places. At one point, I used this in my guest bedroom and I would fill it with snacks and waters and this would be the tray that I use for my guest basket. At one point it moved to my coffee table. I have like a double tier coffee table so I've had it styled on the top. I've used it on the bottom. Currently this guy sits outside on the patio coffee table. But I love this thing. I got this at Goodwill for like four or five dollars. I wish I knew where it originally came from because it is solid. It's got these really solid metal handles to it. It's got this woven um, body and it also has this kind of metal frame at the bottom. I just, I love it. I think, as a matter of fact, look. <laughs> The sticker is still on it, $4.99. <laughs> I bought this for $4.99. For sure, if you find something like this in store, you're probably looking at more of the $30, $40 range. But this is another reason why if you're browsing around Salvation Army, Goodwill, thrift stores, you can get a really great find like this. Again, you can use it on a kitchen counter, you can use it in coffee tables, you can use it on a bathroom countertop or even on a nightstand in a guest bedroom or your main bedroom. It's really fantastic, great bang for your buck, especially considering the price that I paid for this. Now I mentioned that with the long footed tray, I'm using some mini potted plants. I got a set of mini potted plants that look like this from Amazon. I think I paid maybe 17 or at most $20. They're, they came with six. They are spread out all over the place. I use a few of them on the tray. I kind of just stagger them along. I'll insert some footage. I also have a couple around the house. I think I have one in the bathroom. My daughter has one in her bedroom. It's really the perfect size because you know everything's kind of small in my daughter's room. She's only six. Um, the thing that I love about these is that they are just very realistic looking. They're plastic for sure, but they have this little white, uh, almost powdery dusting on them that gives them like a nice feel and it definitely makes them look real. I know that the same seller sells a set of three pots that are much larger and I will probably be picking those up at some point because they're just great filler items when you're trying to create like a little vignette on a side table or a console table. But these, these have held up. I've had these now over two years. They are a, some kind of like pressed paper um, vase on them. They're very thick, they're sturdy, but they're not ceramic. Um, and so these actually made it into a list. I did a post a long time ago about kid-friendly coffee table decor, and these being not breakable definitely fit the bill. So if you're looking for stuff like that, this is a really great option. I'll link it below. Next up are pillow covers. I get all of my pillow covers almost exclusively through Amazon. I just can't find any better price for the sets. They are just phenomenal. These are like a burlap. They are cream with a blue sort of like ticking on them. They're fantastic. Again, this is just the covers that I bought. I bought the inserts from Amazon as well. I'll link those below. But the reason why you want to invest in some pillow covers, and I'm saying invest pretty lightly because odds are I did not spend more than 16 or $17 for a set of two of these pillow covers. You want to be able to switch out your items seasonally. It's just an easy way to refresh your home throughout the year. So even if you don't do it for all four seasons, you might want um, one tone in the fall and winter season and something else in the spring and in the summer. So for me, I have these that are cream with the blue. And then I have the inverse style, which is the blue with the cream. And I love to swap these out 
during the fall and winter and then the spring and summer. It just allows me to lighten and brighten the area, whether it's the um, play space upstairs or the living room downstairs. I swap them out. It lightens up the area in the spring and in the summer. I use the cream. In the fall and the winter, I go with the darker set and it's just a very, very easy way to refresh the sofa and just refresh the overall look of the room. Small baskets are another item that you do not want to miss out on. You can use small baskets for just about anything. You can use them to store toys, you can use them to hide away mail, you can use them as uh, tank baskets on top of the toilet tank and hold you know, extra toilet paper, things like that. They do not have to be expensive, you can find them everywhere. This small one is one of the more recent ones that I've got. It's really, really pretty. I got this from Five Below. I imagine I bought it for $5. <laughs> I can't imagine that it was any more than that. At the most, $6. This one is um, currently being used in one of my bathrooms as a tank basket. It's perfect for storing just those little few things that you want with an arm's reach in the bathroom and it gives it just a really pretty display. I love it. But again, you can use a basket just about anywhere in your home. The next one, I bought this set. This came in a set of two. I got these from Walmart a few years ago. They are great. I keep mail in some of them. I use one on top of my fireplace just to corral toys at the end of the day. It's easy to just pick them up off the floor, throw them in, the kids can participate. It's very easy and simple to just have something that looks a little bit more decorative. It's not very kitty. If you're trying to get away from that look in your space, you want a more elevated look, think about woven baskets instead of like Sesame Street toy chests or things like that. These are fantastic. They're inexpensive. You can find them everywhere. For sure, this is a staple. They're versatile and everyone should have a few baskets around their home. The next thing that you'll want is at least one large vase or vessel, something super oversized. Now they can get expensive. What I've found is that the cheat way around getting a large vessel to put like an oversized floral display is to look for a planter or a pot. So if you go into the garden section instead of staying inside at the tabletop sort of uh, area, you're gonna get a larger item for a better price. So I'll show you one of them that I have here. I bought it from Amazon. I do have an artificial tree in it at the moment, but you can absolutely make yourself a grand centerpiece or a you know center statement on a console table or something like that with a super oversized vessel. This one, again, I went with the white and made sure that it had some sort of texture to it to give it a little bit of dimension and a little bit more interest. This is by far one of my favorite pieces in the house. I am hoping to get into some uplighting very soon. I've seen a lot of people do that and they put them behind the artificial trees and they just shine up and they give this like nice, beautiful glow in the corner of your room. That's what I'm hoping to get into next. But in any event, get a large vessel or planter. The next thing that you'll want is a door wreath. A front door wreath gives so much personality to your home. It's a great way to welcome folks coming in. It's also a great way to decorate for the season. So a door wreath, even if you don't wanna switch it out over and over again, get something that's good for all year round. This is gonna be something that is green, something that is not a, I'll say not a stem that is too seasonal. So I wouldn't necessarily put like a pine wreath up for all year round, right? But a boxwood would be great. Something that's like eucalyptus is great as well. 
I am doing an experiment where I'm using the same wreath for all four seasons and I'm just modifying it with stems and a few embellishments during each season. I'll link to that little experiment below. It's on my blog, but you can for sure work with the same wreath all year round. You don't have to spend a ton of money. Just, you know, $30, $40, get a decent wreath that's constructed well, that's gonna hold up through the elements and use it for all year round. It's a great way to decorate your entryway. To accompany that wreath, you're definitely going to want to get yourself a door mat. You know, a front step without a doormat just seems a, a little bit off. It's kind of like, what, what's missing here? You want that decoration coming from below and above at eye level. They kind of go together. One without the other is a little bit off. So think about getting yourself a nice doormat, something standard. Again, you do not have to switch it out from season to season. You can get something neutral, something that says welcome. And then if you want, you can do an underlay mat, one of those larger underlay mats that's maybe plaid or some other color and swap that out for the season. You could have one that's orange in the fall and you could have one that's red in during Christmas time and just swap that out and leave your main mat the main mat. And it's just a really budget friendly way to keep the front entryway updated throughout the year. The next thing you wanna pick up are some faux stems. Now these are perfect for peppering throughout your home. You can switch them out from season to season. I have some that are back here right now. They're really beautiful. They are not expensive. I cannot stress to you how much less expensive faux stems are online at like Amazon than they are any place else. That's where I prefer to get mine. Sometimes you can get a good deal at Michael's or at Hobby Lobby. I know they have those like 40% off sales and they always have their like Ashland brand on sale, but frankly, they're still so overpriced that you're only gonna get like one for, you know, $2.99. But you need six or you need eight. And so it starts to add up really quickly. If you want something that has that like real touch, real feel, look at the reviews on Amazon. I will link some of my favorites below. I have those for the fall. I also have these that are really gorgeous. Again, I bought these on Amazon for sure under $20. They're absolutely stunning. I'm using them in my bathroom. If you do, if you do not want a, like a tall display like this, consider getting some moss and a low profile, shallow decorative dish. You can use that for centerpieces and countertops as well. It's a great inexpensive way to fill out a space, splash in some color. And if, when you're decorating on a budget, that's really what you wanna do. You want something that's going to go a long distance, something that can be used in multiple spaces that can give you that color, that can give you that texture and really fill out some of those blank surfaces. Next up is a large basket. Earlier we talked about having some small baskets that you can use on tabletops and countertops, but you should go ahead and look into getting a large basket. These can be used not only to give yourself an elevated look for your laundry, you can also use them to store toys and to corral little items that get scattered around the house. You can use them to store blankets, magazines, anything like that that you don't necessarily want to have spread out all the time, but you want to have access to, and you want to have a really pretty way to contain them, get a large floor basket. Sometimes they can be a little bit pricey, but if you get one that is sturdy and well-constructed, it's well worth the investment because you will keep it for years and years and years. Again, it can move through you, move with you throughout your home. So you can have it in the bedroom, you can have it in the living room, you can have it in a play area or the laundry room. 
move it around, get your money's worth out of it. It's a fantastic, versatile home decor item. Okay, we're coming in on the home stretch here and there are just two more items that I wanna talk about. Now, admittedly, these are the items that will probably cost you a little bit more. They're a bit more of an investment, but well worth it. The first is an area rug. You really want to cover some of your hard floors, particularly a living room, a dining room, or a kitchen nook with an area rug. If you do not, I'm assuming of course that you don't have a wall-to-wall -wall carpet situation. If you don't, you need an area rug to help delineate that space, especially if you have an open floor plan. It can go such a ways in decorating your space. Not only does it help inform the layout of your space, it's going to add color, it's going to add texture, it's going to add warmth to your space, it's going to add this layering of decor that builds up from the floor right on up to your furniture, your tabletops, maybe your floor lamps, up to your curtains, and it just kind of rises up from there. And when you build up from the bottom, it creates a really beautiful, complete look in your space. So I would not skip out on an area rug. Of course, not all area rugs are made equal. I like to go to Home Goods or Amazon or Wayfair for my rugs, but really you can get a deal on rugs pretty much anywhere. There's um, boutique rugs, Walmart, Target, at home. You can get some good deals on rugs just about anywhere. I happen to like to go in store and be able to look and feel a rug. So I do like to go into home goods and see if I can score a deal there. But if not, I'm happy to go to Wayfair or something like that and get something that's well reviewed. Last but not least is wall art. You want to get yourself some large oversized wall art pieces. A gallery wall is fine for smaller spaces or you know maybe in one area of your home, but you don't want to have to rely on these small little pieces to collect together to fill up every single wall in your home. You want to have some variety there. So if you want a small collection of personal frames, whether it's going up the staircase or it's in your breakfast nook and you have a little gallery wall there, that's fine. But some of the other big spaces, like maybe over your fireplace, over your sofa, over your bed, you want to have a nice size piece of artwork. Again, the price is going to range here quite a bit. What I have found the sweet spot is, is to find a hybrid print. So paintings are expensive. Hand paintings are expensive. Prints are very, very cheap, but they also tend to look cheap because they're just printed flat on a canvas. What you want to do is find a print that has a little bit of embellishment to it. So this is when they have printed the image and then they have gone back, whether it's by hand or by machine, I do not know, but they will add in some brush strokes, some texture here and there. Sometimes it's just almost like a clear glue that goes on, but it does create a dynamic look for your wall art and it gives it a texture and it makes it look a lot more realistic and a lot more like it is hand painted than just kind of like a poster on canvas. So I would look for something like that. Those pieces that are really, really big, you can usually get uh, maybe around 150, $160. Um, dep again, depending upon the size and your needs, they can go all the way down to maybe like $50 or $60 at Home Goods or um, Marshalls is another place you might find them. At home, all of these places will have wall art. <laughs> Sorry, I have a friend here. Bobby. That's it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. Those are the 12 items that you should absolutely have in your home, especially if you're just starting out and you're trying to figure out what to buy, but you're decorating on a budget and you know you need to spend money, but you don't wanna to spend too much money. 
because usually when you're starting out, there's lots of expenses. There's furniture, there's flatware and plates and dishes and pots and pans and all sorts of things that just add up. Start with these 12 items. Many of them can be broken up, spread throughout your home and give you a lot of mileage. And again, they're versatile so that you can use them in one place one year. And if you want to refresh your space later on, you can use them someplace else. You don't have to get rid of them. These are not throwaway items. They're things that will stay with you long term that you can rotate throughout your house and continue to use them over and over again. I hope you visit me at dianedecor.com. I post all about decorating on a budget and home entertaining over there. Thank you again so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.